what we are concerned with is the understanding of the whole process of life with all its complexity, with its aggressions and miseries, with its sorrows and confusions and agonies. And to understand this vast field of life, which is a constant movement, one must not only hear the words, but also go beyond the words. Because the words, the explanations, are not the facts. But most of us are caught in words. And one must be free of the word, the symbol, the idea, the conclusion. Then one can look. Then one can listen. And that act of listening is a really a miracle. Perhaps it's the greatest miracle when one can listen totally, without any defense, without any barrier, neither agreeing nor disagreeing, which doesn't mean the mind is open. On the contrary, the mind is extraordinarily alert there. I hope when one is listening to this talk or to the various other talks that are coming, One hears a lot of words. And hearing many words is not listening. It's like a noise among the leaves. It soon passes away. When we hear, we either accept or reject or we translate what we hear according to our knowledge, our background. Or we compare what is being said to what is already known. Or we oppose one idea by another. All these characteristics of hearing denies the act of listening. The act of listening is entirely different. When one listens, there is no comparison, there is no acceptance or rejection. The quality of listening is attention. And when you attend totally, with your whole mind, with your heart, with your nerves, with your eyes and ears, completely, in that state of attention, there is the act of listening. And that act of listening puts away anything that is not true. When you give your whole attention to something, that is when you are completely listening, You listen to the totality of the thing. When you attend, there is no borders of inattention. When you so intensely listen, you are listening to the birds, to the wind, to the breeze among the leaves. You listen to the slightest whisper that's about you. So in the same way, 
when one listens, that very act of listening, brings about a total attention in which you see the totality and the whole significance and structure of what is being said. When you say, I can't, you have blocked, you have blocked yourself. But you can understand more and more of it. Not by blocking yourself. Look, sir, if I say there is no God, hmm? I've blocked myself, haven't I? Or if I say there is God, I've blocked myself. But if I say I really don't know, let's find out. Then I have, I have the energy to go into it. Right? Now, so don't let us say yes or no. Don't let us take sides about it. <laughs> now, how would you see the totality of something, of life. You know, get a grasp of feeling of it, a touch of it, a smell of it. Well, as I said, by trying to take more and more of it and understand more and more of it. Ah, you have no time. I know, that's the problem. Oh, that's the problem, <laughs> of course. You're saying that's what I said. That way. That's what I said at the beginning. Yes. I, I mean, if I take time, time, you know, it would be impossible. Follow it up, follow it up step by step. You have approached this problem with the habitual tools. Hmm? And you have eliminated those tools. Not because you are, you are prejudiced against them. Hmm? But you see that they won't answer. Now, when you have eliminated them because they do not answer, your mind is sharper, isn't it? You're on the right track. Of course, you are eliminating them. <laughs> <coughs> right? right. No. Of, of what significance is hope and faith to living? What significance is hope and faith to living? I hope you won't think me harsh if I say there is no significance at all. We've had hope, we've had faith, faith in church, faith in politics, faith in leaders, faith in gurus, because we've wanted to achieve a state of bliss, of happiness and so on. And hope has nourished this faith. And when one observes through history, through our life, all that hope and faith have no meaning at all. Because what is important is what we are. Actually what we are. Not what we think we are. Or what we think we should be. But actually what is. If we know how to look at what is, that, that will bring about a tremendous transformation. 